So I want to share with you guys my blood work after six years of eating a fruit-based diet. Basically, I just eat fruit during the day and a big salad at night, a little bit of nuts and seeds. I don't take any protein supplements. Actually, I get most of my protein from fruit. And a lot of people, when I tell them, um, oh, you eat nuts and seeds, that's where you get your protein from. No, I get it from fruit primarily. Same thing with my calories and vitamins. Uh, I'll, I get a little bit of minerals from the, the fruits too, but it's mostly from greens and from the nuts and seeds too. But uh, I do take a little bit of uh, vitamin B12, which is like one millionth of a gram, so it's like barely anything. And you know, I think everybody should be doing that too, whether you're vegan or not, because 39% uh, of Americans are low in vitamin B12. So my doctor was really curious about this because she was actually looking into doing a vegan diet herself. So when the results came in, she was like, wow, you got really good results and you should keep on doing what you're doing. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, hopefully she can relay that to everybody that she knows. I know I'm going to be doing that. I, I'm making this YouTube video and you know, I'm going to be telling the world about it. So I actually, I've been trying, trying my best to tell everybody, hey, look, I'm doing like 100 one-handed push-ups and do, lifting a crazy amount of weight and my blood work is fine. It's perfect. This isn't the first blood work that I got. I got one uh, six months into this diet and one, one and a half years. But I think uh, you guys don't really care about that. You just want the recent ones. So nothing really changed except for one thing. And I'll be posting another video on that. So I'm going to go over a quick review of everything on these uh, blood tests. And then I'm going to post some little videos going a little bit more in depth about some of the things uh, so people get a better idea of what's going on. So without further ado, here's my six years, over six years of eating a fruit-based diet results. All right, here's my blood work. And let's get started with the complete blood count. And all this came out normal. And I'll tell you guys a little bit about each. Uh, this is my white blood cells. That's my immune system, red blood cells, hemoglobin, hemocredit, and MCV. Uh, this is an important one. Now, if you have two, uh, this measures how big your blood vessels are. If it's too small, it's a good indication you have iron deficiency. And if it's too big, uh, it might mean that you have vitamin B12 deficiency or folic acid deficiency. And I'm right in the middle. I'm perfect with that. Uh, talking about vitamin B12, here is my vitamin B12 number. Now, it's right in range, a little bit low, which kind of surprised me because I take, uh, I take vitamin B12 supplements. And uh, I usually just take one, uh, 1,000 micrograms every week, just one, one dose every week, um, which is like one millionth of a gram. Um, which I'm going to try to take every single day and see if my numbers will rise on this. Which, you know, if it doesn't, that's fine because I'm right in range. So, what else we got here? We got my immune system right here. And that came out perfect. And here's my metabolic panel. My glucose. I know a lot of people are saying, you know, if you eat too much fruit or you eat too much sugar in your diet, you're going to have high glucose levels. Well, my glucose has always been perfect on this diet, and I'm right in range with that. My BUN, this is uh, blood urea, urea nitrogen levels, and this basically is the like a waste product of protein metabolism. And you want to have low in that because you don't want to have a lot of waste product going through your body. So I'm right in range with that. <clears throat> And my creatine levels, you know, there's some people out there that, oh, if you're not eating animal products, you're not going to get any creatine. Well, the body makes creatine, and I'm right in range with that, so that's totally fine. And let's see, got sodium levels, and this is with added sodium. Uh, this was a little different than other years. I have my other years right here, and those are always perfect, too, with um, sodium levels. So I've been adding a little salt to my diet at uh, my salad just at night, and it doesn't seem to really matter at all. It's just like potassium. If you have too much potassium in your diet, your body just, your kidneys just uh, basically just pee it out. Uh, my chloride, carbon dioxide, calcium, protein levels all came out normal. Now, interesting thing with uh, the real 
way to uh, showcase protein uh, if you're getting enough is actually albumin. If your albumin is low, it's a good indication that you're low in protein. But mine is perfectly in range. It also could mean that you have a malabsorption issue. It's interesting. Uh, I shadow a dietitian who uh, we encountered this one lady had low albumin levels, but she was eating a lot of protein. So I think there's something up with uh, she had protein malabsorption. Uh, globulin and bilirubin, which is an interesting one. This is the breakdown of red blood cells. Uh, this was the only time in, uh, I got three blood tests, and this was the only time my <clears throat> bilirubin was in, um, was in range, uh, which is kind of surprising because I have Gilbert syndrome. Uh, basically, I always have a little bit of a uh, higher amount of bilirubin in my blood than other people, which is, which is fine. And it actually can mean that I can live longer. People who have this actually live longer because they have less heart disease uh, because bilirubin acts as a antioxidant. So I thought that was interesting. So I'm losing my power here. Um, and alkaline phosphate taste. I, I looked this one up. I thought this was really interesting. It checks for bone health, gallbladder health, and magnesium, if you're getting enough magnesium. I know there's somebody that said that, oh, you're not going to get enough magnesium on this diet. Well, leafy greens have got a ton of magnesium in it. So I'm right in range with that. Uh, here is my liver levels, ACT and ALT. Perfect. And here's my lipid panels. Of course, I got perfect lipid panel uh, on this diet. My, uh, it's, it's fine, the total. 125. Uh, I want to show you the other tests that I, I, I had for other years. Um, here's 107, and here's 97 for total cholesterol. My cholesterol is so low. You want it under 200? Well, <laughs> mine's 97, all right? Do you know anybody else who's got lower cholesterol than this? No. Basically, I will never have heart disease ever, you know? You want to get it under 150, be heart, uh, heart attack proof? Well, here it is, 97. You know, if you got high cholesterol, you need to be on this diet. Uh, here's my HDL, 43. 37 with LDL, you want to get it under 70 with that. I'm definitely running a range. So it did uh, go up a little bit, but, you know, it's not a big deal. I uh, went up to 125. Oh, whoop to do And let's see, that came out perfect. My uh, cholesterol to HDL ratio is perfect. And here are my triglycerides, and you want them under 150. Mine's 78. I know there's a lot of talk out there if you eat a lot of fruit or uh, especially simple sugars from fruit that you're going to have high triglycerides. Actually, the American Heart Association says that if you eat a diet of more than 65% of the calories come from carbohydrates, especially simple sugars, that you're going to have high triglycerides. Well, explain this, American Heart Association. I'm eating more than probably 80% of my uh of my calories come from carbohydrates, yet I have half, half, almost close to half um, of what you recommend to get under of. So um, even my friend Harley, who's been dumping uh, straight up sugar from a bag into his smoothies, like a half a pound at a time, was unable to raise his triglycerides. I do think for, there are some people that um, that if, if you overeat, that your triglycerides might be going up, or if you're losing weight, that your triglycerides uh, might be going up a little bit. So I thought that was really interesting. So I'll be making another video talking about triglycerides and why some people may have higher triglycerides uh, temporarily, maybe eating this type of diet, maybe because they're losing weight. And here is my th thyroid levels. I know a lot of people are like, oh, you're not going to get enough iron, uh, iodine uh, on this diet. And you're going to have thyroid issues. Well, you know, I'm right in range with that. Perfect thyroid levels. Uh, I did get my testosterone checked. Uh, I never got it checked before. 
and I'm right in range pretty much in the middle with that. Uh, testosterone is interesting. I'm going to be making a whole video just on that and talking about how it can fluctuate day to day, even like hour to hour, which I thought was really interesting. So there you have it, folks. That's some perfect vegan blood test after six years of eating a fruit-based diet. If there's any other tests that you guys want me to do, I'll probably do it. Post it down below. Um, also, uh, definitely give this video a thumbs up. Uh, I definitely deserve it because I got pricked in the arm with a needle. It's not very fun. Actually, give a thumbs up to all the vegans out there posting blood tests because I think this is a very definitive uh, proof that this diet works. So with that all said and done, this is fruit and strength. Oh, yeah! <sighs> Ugh! Ugh! I'm getting crazy here, man.